first MindWeave Magic video. The purpose of this series is to explain the magic system and its place within the game. I am James Eck, a master's student of electrical engineering and the maker of MindWeave. In this video, we will be focusing on the, per on the philosophy behind my the MindWeave Magic system and its goals. The MindWeave Magic system, in broad strokes, is that magic should have limited power, unlimited variety, meaningful choices, and a mystical feel. And I feel that we achieve these, go these goals of our philosophy. We have further goals, including engineering goals. As an engineer, I feel that engineering principles are the most important thing that I've learned in college up to this point. And I feel that we can teach engineering principles using only simple math. To learn engineering, I had to learn differential equations, calculus, and all of the physics tools of electromagnetics. <clears throat> but I feel that this isn't necessary, that we can teach the principles of engineering without teaching the science behind it. And we can do this with a simple magic system that provides a simple science in which to work with the tools of engineering. The engineering principles I believe are important are that there are hard physical limits in all systems, that there's only so much you can do in any system, that there are multiple solutions to every problem, that there are trade-offs in everything. You can have more power, but at the cost of efficiency. <coughs> and that optimization is key to discovering the best possible solution to a problem. <clears throat> One illustration of how the MindWeave Magic System teaches these principles it concerns these hard physical limits. In antenna design, the focus of my research, there's a famous plot where you can plot the hard physical limit of bandwidth efficiency versus the size of the antenna relative to its wavelength this hard physical limit cannot be passed by any antenna. While many have designed antennas that come close to passing it, many other antennas fall well below the line. And they could do this for a variety of reasons. Maybe their focus isn't on bandwidth efficiency. Maybe it's focused on gain or on a specific pattern. But this is the hard limit to the best possible antenna you could design. In MindWeave, we could generate a similar plot. If we were to plot the spell point efficiency of power in a spell versus the time required to cast that spell, you obtain a plot that looks something like this. <clears throat> this plot represents the most efficient spells you could cast in a given amount of time. Now, this line is going to move up as you become a more powerful caster. <clears throat> and the time is going to compress as you become a faster caster. But for, in general terms, this is the physical limit of the MindWeave Magic System as far as efficiency goes. And you'll cast spells that approach and could fall on the line. <clears throat> but most times, you'll be underneath the line because you'll be looking for something other than power efficiency. Maybe you've chosen to try to get as much power in time as you can. And so you're casting short spells with a lot of power but very little efficiency. Or maybe you have a longer spell but you've chosen to cast it using components that add utility, such as range or area of effect. And so that is cutting down on your efficiency. And so in the Miami Magic System, there are hard limits, just as in engineering, system, engineering systems in real life. And I feel it's important, an important goal, to teach engineering principles earlier than we do. We also have... game design goals. And these game design goals are intended to make the game fun through the magic system. <clears throat> One goal is versatility and choice. We want magic to be fun in the sense that you can do anything you want within the limits of the power. So with a single caster you don't need to choose a spell. You can invent the spell to solve the problem that you have. And choice in that you can, there are many options to solving the problem and you have to come up with the best possible option. I like that the magic system has a raw elemental aesthetic. It is immersive to have the magic feel primitive and real. Uh, this aesthetic comes through in the arcane circle and in the elemental fingers. You can take the symbols from the arcane circle and juxtapose them to form new symbols that have deep meaning. You can take the negativity symbol and change each of those circles into the evil symbol, which implies a lot. You could take K 
ku, the physical symbol, and juxtapose it with ya, the symbol of earth, physicality and earth, combat and earth. The positivity symbol juxtaposed with the good symbol, or the positivity symbol juxtaposed with the evil symbol, or the fire symbol. And all of these possibilities give a raw feel to the magic, and it makes it feel mystical, which personally I find very fulfilling in a game. <clears throat> and we want the, game, the system to be balanced. We want magic to not be an all-powerful source of, of damage and solutions to problems, but we want it to be balanced with people who have chosen to be fighters or archers or thieves. I personally am a, someone who plays fighter characters, and I don't like that mages are often the most powerful. And so I feel like we can have an interesting magic system that's fulfilling for someone playing a mage while having a fighter be able to contend with that mage on an even playing field. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for future magic videos where we'll explain aspects of the magic system in full. Thank you.